Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a social media dashboard using Google Data Studio and Supermetrics. You'll learn how to connect data from Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and present it in a single dashboard. I'll walk through how you can create the dashboard in your own account, and also share a template so you can get started quickly. Now it's time to get started. Here we are inside Google Data Studio and we can see the social dashboard that we're about to create. We can see top level metrics, we can see the number of Facebook likes, LinkedIn followers and Twitter followers. We can also see the growth in follower numbers for each of the social networks. This allows us to quickly see trends in our follower count. For example, we can see a spike in followers on LinkedIn. We can then review the activity on LinkedIn to see what occurred at that particular time. The time series for Twitter is a little bit different since we're unable to pull the daily follower numbers. Instead, I've included details about the likes on our tweets by day. This again allows us to see if tweets on particular days are resulting in more likes. On the right hand side of the report, I've included two metrics from Google Analytics. This shows us the total number of website users and value coming from each social network. This allows us to see the total number of people who've clicked through to our website from Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. All of the social metrics are being brought in by Supermetrics. So let's head to Supermetrics now. We're going to use Supermetrics for Google Drive, since we're going to be pulling data into Google Sheets before connecting Sheets to Google Data Studio. So let's select Supermetrics for Google Sheets. We can now add the Supermetrics add-on to Google Sheets. We can see Supermetrics loads inside Google Sheets. Now I need to authorize Supermetrics to work with Google Sheets. And now we can see Supermetrics loading in the sidebar. A quick tip, next time you need to use Supermetrics, for example when you create a new spreadsheet, you can find it under the Add-ons dropdown. We can see there are a range of different data sources we can pull into Google Sheets using Supermetrics. Today we're going to be pulling in data from Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. So let's click Facebook Insights. You'll need to authorize Supermetrics to access your Facebook data. I've already completed this step. Now I select my Facebook page. I'm going to pull in 90 days of data, so I'm going to select last X days and enter 90, and I'll include today. Now I select the metric for Facebook. I'm going to select total likes. I'm going to split this by date and select 100 for the number of rows. Now I click Get Data to Table. Now I can see the data added to my sheet, and this is what we're going to pull into Google Data Studio in a moment. Let's rename the tab so it's easy to identify when we head into Data Studio. So let's call this Facebook. Now let's click Exit. I'm going to add a new tab, and let's call this one LinkedIn. Let's select a new data source, this time LinkedIn. Again, we're going to authorize Supermetrics to access our LinkedIn data. Again, I'm going to make sure I have 90 days selected, including today, and I'm going to click on Select Metrics. And I'm looking for Follow a Trend. I'm going to split this by date and select 100 for the number of rows. And let's add the data to the table. So that's looking good. Now I'm going to create my next tab, this time for Twitter. I select Twitter as the data source. You'll find this towards the bottom under Simple Connectors. We authorize Supermetrics to access Twitter. For the query type, I'm going to select Twitter user data and enter my Twitter username. 
I select Follow Account, and I'm going to add this to the table. Now I've noticed that Google Data Studio likes to have a date included with metrics. So let's add in a column header and date, and I'm going to put in an equal sign, and then today, and close the bracket. This will automatically put the current date in our sheet. Now with Twitter, I did mention when we were looking at the dashboard that we can't include the daily follower numbers. It's just going to give us a single number for the follower count. I'll show you what I mean. Let's create a new tab and let's call this one Twitter Trend. This time I'm going to select Twitter User Tweets. And I'm going to select 500 as the number of rows. And for the fields, I'm going to select User Follow Account. I'm going to show this by date, and let's see what we get. So let's add this to the table. We can see we're getting different dates, but the follow account number is exactly the same for each date. It's giving us the current follow account, and it's applied to every date. Now that's not very useful, so let's click Modify, and what we're going to do is report on the number of likes per tweet instead. So let's add Tweet Like Count. And we're just going to remove the user follow account because we already have that in the Twitter tab. And let's apply the change. Now that looks a bit strange. This is formatting the second column as a date since we previously had a date in that column. So let's change the formatting to plain text and apply the change again. OK, so now we can see the number of likes are broken down by the post date. Let's name our spreadsheet. And now we can head into Google Data Studio. Let's create a new report. And for the data source, I'm going to click Create New Data Source on the bottom right hand corner, and I'm going to select Google Sheets. Now I'm going to select my Google Sheet that I just created, and we can see here the different worksheets or tabs we created. So let's start by pulling in our Facebook data. Let's click Connect, and we can see we're going to be pulling in the date and the total number of likes. Let's add this to the report. Let's begin by adding a scorecard. Now this doesn't look right. I'm summing up all of the likes, so we need to modify this. We're going to select Custom as the date range, and we'll select Today from the drop-down and Apply. We can now see the total number of likes. Next, I can create my time series. Since the overall number of likes isn't changing a lot on a daily basis, it looks like a flat line. It just looks static. But what we can do is we can actually change the styling to see a more granular breakdown by day. So let's click on Style. Now let's scroll down, and for the axis minimum, let's just delete the zero, and this will now automatically update for us. So now we're not starting at zero, which allows us to see the more granular detail inside this graph. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for all your dashboards, but in this case, it's suitable to see the more granular detail on a daily basis. It makes it easier to see the number of people liking and unliking our page. Now we're going to add the two metrics from Google Analytics. Let's add a scorecard. We'll remove the data source and add a new one. For this dashboard, I'm going to add the Google Analytics sample data, but you should connect your own Google Analytics data to the dashboard. Now I'm going to select Users as the metric. I'm also going to add a comparison for the previous period. 
This will show me all of my website users, so I'm going to add a filter. So I just see users coming to my website from Facebook. To do this, I click Add Filter. And then I create an Include filter and select Social Network. Then I enter Facebook and name the filter. This means my scorecard is now showing me the number of website users from Facebook. Now I'm going to add a small spark line for my users. I'm going to add a time series. And I'm going to again select users. I'm going to add my Facebook filter. And I'm also going to uncheck Show Axes. Now I can copy my scorecard and sparkline. I'm going to change them from showing users to total value. So now I can copy these elements for my other social networks. I'll need to change the data source for my metrics. So let's click on our total likes and we're going to remove the Facebook data source. Now we're going to select a new data source and click Create. We're going to reselect Google Sheets and the spreadsheet we created, but this time we're going to select LinkedIn and Connect. We need to reselect the metric. And again clicking on Custom for the date range, and Today, and click Apply. We can now see our number of LinkedIn followers. Next we can modify our time series. And modify our Google Analytics data. Now we can copy this again for Twitter. Again adding a new data source. This time we're going to add one more data source for the Twitter trend because this is coming from the separate tab inside our spreadsheet. So let's remove the data source and create a new one.
Now, since this is a completely different metric that we're really reporting on, I'd encourage you to change the style. So for my report, I've made this orange so it's clearly different from the Facebook and LinkedIn charts. And again, I'm going to modify the Google Analytics data. Now all we need to do is make some other style changes to tweak the look of our dashboard. And now we have our social dashboard using Google Data Studio and Supermetrics. If you haven't been following along in your own Data Studio account, then you can grab the complete report using the link in the description below. And you can tweak this further once you've added it to your account. I'd love to see what you come up with, so let me know in the comments below. So that's how you can create a social media dashboard using Google Data Studio and Supermetrics. I'd love to know how you're reporting on your social channels, and if there's anything else you'd like to include in your dashboard, let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, then please like it so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.